Sorry. Never finished yesterday's video, so um, here's the rest of the yard at Samas, where the machines are put once they've been built. This room is basically soundproofed, and they've got like a fake tractor, and they couple mowers to it and run them up, and measure the noise levels and check for oil leaks and vibrations and everything. Like a like a tractor's crashed through the wall. Let's winch him in on that. That one's pretty much finished, just doing the finishing touches before they drive it out, I think. This toilet roll is just like what we used to get in school. We're just entering the yard now with all the finished machinery. This is impressive, but that means it's only a minute. These are some offset flail mowers, flicked on the back for transport. And then some single rotor rakes with uh, no rake, just the rotors. This is a 3.4 metre front mower, all in black that someone's ordered. You won't be able to go down the road with that legally, I don't think, quite in the UK. Or just, but it is a, technically over three metres, which is puts you in another category of the law. See the yard how it's all block paving. Can you see how it's crumbled around the grid? You just lift them out, put new stone, some stone on it and put it back down again. Whereas if it's concrete, you'd have to dig a big chunk out and re-concrete it and it never match. These are ones that they make for a different market. I think, is it Mashio or something? I think they go to America. That's that rake we saw them building before, finished. In here, everything is packed in crates and then plastic wrapped, ready for export. It's nice, it's nice and warm in here. It smells of timber as well. We're in the backyard. There's a load of mowers ready for dispatch. Quite, quite a few to be fair, because they go right back. A load of flail mowers. We've got some snow plows, some more front mowers, some tedders. More mowers, flails, tedders, rakes, more flails, more rakes. Big twister, so this is like what we saw when we arrived, but two of them, so it's like a V-shape that pulls it together in a row in front of you. I've climbed up on this to get a better view because they just go on for miles. How big a branches will that cut? We, we've got this. We've got this arm that you put in the. Oh, and the twist is over there. Oh, on a on a, the, on a the, tele uh, F means that it goes on the fisher. Fisher is the is the carrier fisher that you put in the yeah that you put on the front loader. So normally. Oh right, yeah, the regular, yeah. The regular tractor. Yeah, the, and that's the, a saw disc as well. Yeah, the arm. Plus we've got a few of the attachments, like the saw and the and the scissors. How big a branch will the scissors cut? Up to eight centimeters. Eight centimeters. Wow. This is the frame that them uh, saws go on and scissors. So you just put uh, for tally on the brackets on it. No, for pines, but maybe more for bushes. Yeah. But they do a lot of a lot of you know bush. Some acres of rakes, including a black edition. You haven't seen that black rake because they won't sell a black rake. They're demo machines, so they paint them black so that you know the dealers aren't selling them on them to the demo into people. So you can't order them. There's a quiz question. What's that? I know what it is. <laughs> It's the push crates to uh, inside. You keep giving it away! <laughs> it keeps giving them away. That, yeah, that was your quiz question, but that's for loading containers. Put the wooden box in and shove them in with the tally on there. This is one of these now with the brackets on. So it's got a load of brackets. And then that bolts to that, and then that's one of them scissors. It'll cut eight, eight centimetre branches. It's lethal light, isn't it? You won't get your hands stuck in that. No. The saw blade, though, will do what? Like 12 inch? Yeah. 
Depends how well, it's, it's, it. well, you've got the, it's the whatever the rotor is, isn't yeah, it? To the middle, right. to the middle boss, yeah. Hmm, handy. Two hundred thirty-seven acres in twenty-four hours, is it? No, eight hours. Eight hours. Wow. <laughs> Big zetter on the We're not going in looking at that nine three six, no. Oh, it's a fair beast in that far behind. 936 flat out. It's the ride at this farm now. We'll have a look around, there's the silage pits. We've got some cows. Is he going to turn down there now? Oh no, he's going that way. It was a dog. Listen to that roar. So this, in this village, there's 25 farms. It's not so they're all like spread out. The fence working away over there as well. Anyway, tractors are outside. We're now in this shed. There's 120 cows in here. I think they're carving um, or going to. This is the janitor. So this goes up and down. I think it's on charge. It parks itself up and charges up. And it goes up and down these rails. So it knows when to charge. And it'll go along and it'll push the, the silage into them. And then inside these grey boxes is two Lely robots in that side and two Lely robots in that side. And when the cows need to get milk, they just walk in and get milk and totally automatically. I think they're doing 38 to 40 litres. This shed is all insulated because in the winters here, it can get down to like minus 25. But in the summer, it can get, they had a record temperature last year of 43 degrees. So they've got huge fans as well. It costs more, they said, to keep the cows cool than it does to keep them warm. We've obviously got like all the sort of fires over for ventilation as well. But yeah, it's, it sounds like we're in there at the moment. I think we can see without walking through all that and we won't be very popular on the plane getting our boots dirty. But you know what a Lely robot looks like because I showed you one at Charlotte Ashley's cleaning new the other week. But yeah, every time when they've eaten all the food, it needs pushing towards it. That fires up electrically and just mooches up and down, just pushing it in like a little bulldozer. So the slurry goes out of the slats and it comes out the shed and goes through a separator. Then once it's gone through a separator then, you mix it with lime to kill any bugs or mastitis or anything like that. And then the cows are bedded back on it. So it's basically digested silage really. One there now being milked. I don't know whether it's on a timer or it's fully charged, but it's just kicked off now. So it'll go down the shed and start pushing the, the feed to him. I don't know if it does it every hour, maybe. Cows are instantly pushing it back again. Seeing you, you stood in the way. Michael's trying to film it and he stood in the way, so it's going backwards now. <laughs> What's it doing now? Remember Dusty Bin that used to be on this? So it's like a Dalek actually, no. It looks like a Dalek. Is there a flash in 
might. See better from this angle how much it's pushing it in. That robot's there is pushing up, that robot over there is milking the cow, and then this robot is pushing the slurry through the slats. All this technology in, in a man, isn't it? Farming poses. Look at that. I wonder, often they, I wonder how often they stand on it. <laughs> I'm assuming that's like a, like a lawnmower, it's a self docking charging point. Yeah, it goes there and charges up, yeah. Little uh, calf shelters. So they stay warm in there. But look at this beast. Size of the tires on that. We'll have a look at that in a second. 750. Month that fiberglass tank. Is that a fiberglass vacuum tank then? Or does it just pump it to fill it and then it it's got PTO on it? Someone will tell me. I'll find out. Oh, it's got itself a snowplow, Samas snowplow. Then. 9.30 It's not so old that is it? Tyres look fairly fresh on it as well I don't think you'll be able to date it off the reg out here Big grubber there Monster 80mm ball itch as well And then Muck spreader. Metal fac. Muck spreader. <laughs> Ooh, bit of string wrapped around that disc. Nasty. Are they, are they fiberglass, them? Yeah, so that's actually fiberglass. But can it, can it suck stuff up or not? Yeah. Really? And it doesn't crack the fiberglass? This must be very old because it's got the winch for the top link to take the weight of it. And this is a, his new cultivator. I think he's only said he's had it two weeks. But he has got it dirty already and loads of string wrap right around it. Better cover some ground with that though. There he is again, flat out. Wondering why there's three people pointing a camera at him. <laughs> The guy that's just gone past with that tank and built it himself, apparently. It's famous now as well. Three, three, three people got a video of it. <laughs> 120 hectares, so what's that? Uh, 250 acres. No, 300 acres. 930. Big tanker. Big New Orleans, new forage wagon coming as well. Two staff, including his dad, I think, as well. Still making money. Um, don't know why it's just so hard in the UK to be fair well, well seems to be easy over here for some reason I don't know why and we've got some chickens as well everything's got massive tyres hasn't it yeah. it's a monster isn't it it's real sandy ground isn't it yeah, yeah you can't really see in the yard but no. sandy soil that's on a K80 ball as well and it's got a jaw hitch on the top with the PTO going underneath the drawbar which is just different to what we do at home, really. We have, we'd normally have the PTO going the other way, on top of the drawbar. Next to the chicken, you've got some more calves. There's a seven metre there for you, Joe. Yeah, take it home. Jump on the seven metre. 
I think we've got one of these coming on demo. <laughs> that food smells good. It must have molasses in it. Mm. Apparently that's dried fruit pulp. Not. Well, it might still have molasses on it, will it? Definitely smell molasses. It's basically for like apple cores and things like that. Just dry that. Yeah. All right. He's just been telling us about the protests out here. So they get like an area payment and, and they're still going to get that from the EU because they're still in it. But they're going to make it, they were trying to make it mandatory that they had to give 7% of the land up and just do nothing with it. So of course, if you've got cows to feed, that's no good. And um, if you're growing corn and making a profit on it or trying to, then that's no good because you're just basically having your farm took off you. So they've been protesting anyway. They've tried to reverse that now and made it a bit more optional, a bit like what we've got at home with the SFI, where you can you can opt an acreage in and then be rewarded for what you've took out of production by doing something different with it, like producing something for the for the environment. So they're a lot happier at the moment. But we did hear that there was going to be some protests today and tomorrow. So I don't know if they're still not happy enough. A couple of old girls over there. Uh. And then there's even an acrobat as well. So this farm, that's where the robot it milked was where the blue shed. There is bales of straw, but his farm ends there. That building's his, that building's his, and that one. This field's his, and then that's the neighbours. And the buildings over there are that other neighbours. So there's like three or four farms just, just on this bit of a hillside. Oh, first spreader going out over there. Big thanks to pa Pavo, I think I've pronounced it properly, for showing us around his farm. I'm sure you'll all agree we've enjoyed ourselves, haven't we? Really good. Yeah. I think we should clap. I can't, I yeah. can't clap with one hand, but we are. Thank you. That was obviously yesterday, and we've been visiting farms as well today, and machinery dealers have loads of stuff to show you. We're just on our way to the airport. We are hoping that we can get to the plane because the taxi drivers are demonstrating they're blocking the roads. So hopefully we'll miss our flight. If we don't, we'll be back tomorrow. There's three flights again tomorrow. But yeah, we should be there. Anyway, thanks for watching today. And there's Ian with the birthdays. Lisa Curry is 44. Charlotte Hudson is 22 and a half, multiplied by two. Paul Farrell is 58. Nigel Gibson is 59. Ian Atkinson is 51. Dickie Garth is 50. Archie Zach is 11. And Ian Hukan and Jane Gilbraith, happy birthday to you. £63,000. 777 pound raised.